The elements of the financial component are number one, damageability, number two, ground of loss, number three, the application of policy terms and conditions, and fourthly, the output calculations. And all of these um, processes run within the OASIS kernel, which is the central calculation engine of the OASIS platform. Now, to understand the calculation, we need to cover a bit about how models represent uncertainty. There are two sorts of uncertainty about it, principally. The first one is how frequently and how severe are the events that go into the catalogue. And that's sometimes called the primary uncertainty. And the difficulty with that is that we often don't know. We, we have some limited historical evidence, we have some scientific ideas, we might even have some historical um, evidence of an indirect nature, but we just don't necessarily have a good idea of how extreme those events can be. So the first and biggest problem in the uncertainty of CAT models is what, what those events are, and which ones you should choose. So that's the first component, that's events. Um, the second element of this paradigm is the vulnerability. And vulnerability has been represented, I think, poorly in, in the past and still is. And it's often represented as what they call a, a mean damage curve. So you increase the intensity, say the gust speed, along one axis, and you look at the mean damage that is consequent on that uh, as a plot. And you get a nice plot that can look like that or could look like that. Um, but if you look at the actual data that underpin that, the claim data that underpin it, and I don't mean the mean damage ratios, I mean the actual damage that occurs, it's often a very wide scatter plot. A scatter plot that means that instead of looking at a curve, or trying to fit a curve to it, as we have been doing, you might do better to fit a matrix to it. The model uncertainties are provided in the data that plugs into the kernel. They're broken down into two broad classifications. First of all, primary uncertainty, which are the events and their frequencies and the hazard footprints. And then there's the vulnerability uncertainty in the vulnerability module. When it comes to the events, the modeler has to decide how those events might play out in time and provides a timeline of occurrences to the calculation. Uncertainty in the level of intensity of the hazard and uncertainty in the level of damage given that intensity is represented as discrete probability distributions. As a simple example, we don't know exactly how strong the wind is going to blow on our roof. And when we do know, we don't know exactly how much damage will be caused. So it's better to work with ranges of likelihood. We consider the use of discrete probability distributions or histograms as best practice because you can represent any, any belief such as point values or closed form distributions or even empirical distributions. So modelers are unrestricted in the way that they want to represent uncertainty. So that brings us to the first calculation which is damageability. When we talk about damage, we're mostly referring to the economic loss as a proportion of the value of something, like a house. So we talk about damage factors of 10%, 20% relative to its total value. In the calculation then, we combine the hazard and the vulnerability uncertainty into one distribution called the effective damage distribution. And you can think of this as the overall likelihood of different levels of, of loss for an event and a property. All of that data gets calculated for all events and, and the properties you want to analyse and flows through into the ground at loss calculation. And the way that we try to do that simulation nowadays is a certain variety of what's called a Monte Carlo sampling. It's called Monte Carlo because Monte Carlo has gaming tables and it's, it was coined by John von Neumann to represent random sampling. And it's been used a lot to solve problems, particularly uh, integration problems, nonlinear problems. In our case, it has not only got computational advantages in that it allows you to sample and get all the output losses that could occur, but it also is in line with the way actual losses occur and claims get made against policies in real life. So when you do a Monte Carlo sampling of a model, 
Because you don't know which damage you'll get, for example, then you just sample one, sample two, and you get a, you get a set of, of samples or realizations of that event across your properties. And those can go down into your insurance policy and they can have no effect or some effect, but it is like real claims. So it's like a realization of the event occurring. So now that we have the individual loss samples from the ground of loss calculation, we can pass them through the policy terms and conditions as if they were claims. This mimics the real life process of, re of insurance. We also calculate the effects of reinsurance, which is when the insurer buys protection to manage its overall exposure in the case of writing too much risk. Terms and conditions can be complicated as they can apply to different elements of the, of the property. For example, a building could have just a deductible on the structure, um, a limit could apply, apply to a whole site, or could apply to a, a group of sites in a region. There are many combinations. So we have a data-driven approach, and in that data, it represents a, a hierarchy of how losses should group together and what calculations should be done at every node in that tree hierarchy. What comes out of the financial module is the gross loss to the insurer, that's before reinsurance is taken into account, and then the net loss, which is after reinsurance has been taken into account. The final part of the calculation then is the output calculations, where the losses are summarised into various reports. You can get a report for the average or the mean damage, this is called the analytical result, and this is really intended as a a quick run to get the losses to an order of magnitude before you run the full sample report. The types of outputs you get are detailed ones such as losses by event or by year and then you can get some high level results such as the average annual loss or exceedance probability curves. The EP curve tells you the chances of exceeding various levels of loss in a given year. The samples are typically summarised into a mean and a standard deviation which will tell you your expected loss and the spread of loss or the uncertainty. Running Monte Carlo samples through your policies gives you the highest fidelity view of the distribution of your final losses. It ensures that the uncertainty built into the model is visible and not distorted by premature averaging or simplifying assumptions. Now this may not be the convenient single curves and beautiful beta distributions that we have been used to. In some cases it may be. So if you had a homogeneous book of residential property on a treaty, then it's very likely that you will see the law of large numbers or the central limit theorem kick in and you'll, you'll get a nice centralised, centralised tendency. If on the other hand you've got a commercial property risk where you've got high uncertainty about its construction characteristics, and there is variability in its terrain in the, in the area, then you can expect to see a high degree of variability. And that's really important because underwriters who are looking at commercial property are often, in my view, rightly skeptical about the results they get from these nice simplistic models. And what I think we'll find is that when you run them through the modern high fidelity models from Monte Carlo, you'll get a much wider dispersion of losses. This is informative. So People often say, well, you can't know what you don't know. Actually, what you do is, with probability theory, it actually tells you what you don't know. And that's why it's so useful. So if you spend all your time thinking, well, I know this, and I've got this nice number of the annual average loss, or I've got the EP curve, what this is now telling you is how valid that assumption was. So if you've made a business decision based upon that, the beauty of these modern methods is they, they reveal how well grounded that decision was and in many ways legitimizes a different view of risk which is more akin to the traditional exposure management view or underwriting view where there is an element of judgment required it's not just blind acceptance of a few key numbers of the model so we may be coming into an era now where the cat models that have been so wonderful and beneficial in getting an order of magnitude of the loss that we could experience they move into an era when we now see that the distribution of those losses requires us to make judgments and those judgments are often couched in the following form. They're not just simple probability statements, they are credibility statements. It's really helpful to have consistent financial calculations to compare models. 
when you're comparing them in two different platforms, you don't know how much of the difference is down to the model itself and how much is down to the number crunching. And this is why using Oasis to compare models and run multiple models is so useful.